Auto follow allows you to have a 2D or a 3D graphic follow text as is being typed. Let's add a 3D primitive pod to the scene and reduce the Y scale to about 0.2. You can then easily drag or import texture maps to the surface of the 3D primitive. Then let's change the color to red and reduce the specular color to make it a little darker red. In the plugin properties, you can adjust the properties of the 3D primitive. Let's check maintain shape and skew textures. This will keep the shape of the pod uniform when you skew it and then adjust the scale. In the upper left hand corner, we'll adjust the smoothing and change the size to make it make the corner rounded. And let's do the same to the lower right. Now let's add a 3D text template and type the words name and super. Reduce the size to around uh, 85 scan lines and position it in place over the bar. It is a good habit to rename the elements in the scene graph. So let's rename the text to name super and the pod will become bar FG or foreground. This will become clearer shortly. So right click on the bar FG and select auto follow. The reference node is name super. Make the connection point to be left and then adjust the offset to bring the bar into the proper position behind the text. Now let's click the X scale and adjust the padding to, the, to scale the bar to the right of the text. With the text selected, right click and choose 3D template properties. Let's click the width for size to fit and then adjust the width numbers until the blue bounding box is the desired width. In the scene graph, then we're going to select bar FG and copy and paste it to get a copy of it. And all the properties we just assigned it. Let's rename this element bar BG and then drag it below the bar FG in the scene graph. Let's change the color of this element from red to white. Now I want to make this element a little larger than the red bar to give it a border. So let's scale it in the Y first and then adjust the Y position so that it is equal top and bottom. Now right click and choose auto follow again and move it a little to the left so the offset makes it show under the red and then adjust the padding so it is equal on the right. Now that the bar BG is the correct size, let's copy and paste it again so it is on top of the bars and text. The goal for this is to put a different texture map on the surface that we can use as a highlight. When it is in place, adjust the transparency and the rendering properties. And I'll make the blending additive. Now extend the timeline on this object to about 12 seconds. Select clamp in the mapping pull down and now move the X offset so the image goes off to the left. At around 10 seconds, move the X offset off to the right. To make this element loop, select transition properties and click loop. To easily animate all this name super, control click all the elements in the scene graph and click on the grouping tool and then rename the group name super. Now let's create our effect in animation by right clicking on the default timeline tab and select effect in with selected and do the same for the effect out. Click on the effect in timeline tab and at frame zero move the group off the bottom and at time one second click the Y position button which resets it to the original position. Now right click on the second keyframe, select modify keyframe attributes, select ease and ease in from the pull down and I'll set the ease time to about one second. Now on the effect out let's do the opposite move. On the first keyframe select modify keyframe attribute, select ease and ease out from the pull down and I'll set this to a one second as well. Let's record this scene and now when you type in some new text the bars and the highlight will self adjust to be the proper length. Now let's play the scene and you will see the highlight and the bars are at the correct lengths.